this is the third uh, video on trigeminal nerve and in this video i'll consider the ophthalmic nerve we look at the origin cause branches and distribution or structure supplied by the ophthalmic nerve so you all must be knowing trigeminal nerve that has got three branches or three divisions and these are the ophthalmic the first division which we will consider in this video second is the maxillary and third is the mandibular nerve so i have made separate videos for maxillary and mandibular nerves which can be uh, seen by you or i'll put the links of these videos in the description box okay in this picture we can see here this is the trigeminal nerve and this is the trigeminal ganglion here and from its anterior aspect we can see the three branches arising this one is the ophthalmic nerve that is the first branch or the first division of trigeminal nerve second here this is the maxillary nerve and this is the mandibular nerve the sensory part of the mandibular nerve now here the ophthalmic nerve and the maxillary they are pure sensory nerve it is only the mandibular nerve which is a mixed nerve let us look at the course of ophthalmic nerve so as can be seen starting from here that is from the anterior aspect of the trigeminal ganglion so we can say that the ophthalmic branch or ophthalmic division of trigeminal nerve commences from the anterior aspect of trigeminal ganglion and after that it is going to enter into this blue colored translucent structure which has been shown here into the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus so now this nerve is going to run along the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus and just below we can also see that maxillary all, uh, nerve also uh, runs along the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus next to that what happens is the nerve that is the ophthalmic branch of the trigeminal nerve divides into three branches so these three branches they are this is the frontal branch this is the nasociliary branch and this is the lacrimal branch so after dividing into three branches it with the three branches separately will leave the cranial cavity via a uh, this thing uh, you can see here opening this is known as superior orbital fissure so by all the three uh, branches of ophthalmic division that is the nasociliary frontal and lacrimal they will leave separately by passing through the superior orbital fissure to enter the orbit so this is briefly the course of the ophthalmic nerve now we will consider the course of various branches of ophthalmic nerve and their further branches so just to repeat once more the ophthalmic nerve arises from the anterior aspect of the trigeminal ganglion it runs along the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus and at the anterior end of the cavernous sinus it divides into three branches these are the nasociliary the frontal and the lacrimal and all the three branches separately they will pass through superior orbital fissure to enter into the orbit let us now look at the branches of the ophthalmic nerve so first we'll consider the frontal nerve which can be seen here this is the frontal nerve in fact this is the largest branch of the ophthalmic division of trigeminal nerve so here the frontal nerve is going to enter into the orbit uh, from the lateral part of the superior orbital fissure and is going to run straight forward how exactly it is going to run it will pass straight forward between the roof of the orbit and this muscle which can be seen here this muscle is the levator palpebrae superioris so this frontal nerve runs straight forward on which muscle the levator palpebrae superioris and somewhere in the middle of the orbit it is going to divide into its two terminal branches so let us see what are the terminal branches of the frontal nerve we can see here it is dividing into two terminal branches and these are the supratrochlear nerve and the supraorbital nerve so supraorbital is more laterally placed and supratrochlear is medially placed 
and they will leave the orbit and emerge on the face just above the supraorbital margin there let us see what are the structures which are supplied by that as mentioned by me just now that they will emerge on the face above the supraorbital margin that means almost at the lower end of the forehead so what are the structures supplied by them the supraorbital nerve which you can see here sometimes there are two also that will supply forehead obviously anterior part of the scalp will be supplied by that plus it will supply upper eyelid and it will also supply the frontal ear sinus so it is very easy to understand if you put your finger just above the supraorbital margin then you can see if you put it downward upper eyelid comes you take it forward uh, upwards the forehead is there and then anterior part of the scalp is there and uh, which bone lies deep to this the frontal bone so there we have the frontal ear sinus the supratrochlear nerve will also supply the same structures that is the forehead the anterior part of scalp and the upper eyelid so this is our frontal nerve so frontal nerve is the largest branch of the ophthalmic division it runs straight forward it is quite superficial when you remove the roof of the orbit right so it is between the roof of the orbit and the levator palpebris superioris in the middle of the orbit it divides into two terminal branches which are supraorbital and supratrochlear and what do they supply mainly if you put your hand over the uh supraorbital margin that is upper eyelid forehead and anterior part of the scalp the supraorbital nerve will also supply frontal ear sinus so the second branch of the ophthalmic nerve that is lacrimal nerve so lacrimal nerve is going to run along the lateral aspect of the orbit how do you remember this lacrimal word l starts with l lateral also starts with l so this nerve is placed laterally in the orbit so this nerve you can see here this is the lacrimal nerve and in fact this is the smallest branch of the ophthalmic nerve now here we can see this lacrimal nerve will enter into the orbit by passing through the lateral part of the superior orbital fissure and is going to run forward along the upper margin of this muscle that is the lateral rectus muscle to reach the lacrimal gland it will supply sensory fibers to the lacrimal gland plus it will supply uh, other structures like conjunctiva here so the lacrimal nerve supplies lacrimal gland conjunctiva and it will also supply the upper eyelid that is the lateral part of the upper eyelid uh, the branch of uh, lacrimal nerve which supplies upper eyelid is known as the palpebral branch right so the lateral part of upper eye upper eyelid will be supplied by that more a lacrimal nerve it also receives a communicating branch from the zygomatico temporal nerve which is a branch of maxillary nerve and this branch will actually carry the secretomotor parasympathetic fibers to the lacrimal gland the lacrimal nerve itself supplies sensory fibers to the lacrimal gland whereas the zygomatico temporal nerve will be bringing the secretomotor fibers so actually these secretomotor fibers which are coming via zygomatico temporal they will be coming from the facial nerve we'll just see that but first let us see here so the lacrimal nerve receives communicating branch from the zygomatico temporal nerve which conveys the parasympathetic secretomotor fibers for the lacrimal gland let us briefly see now how they reach here so in this picture we can see here this is the trigeminal ganglion here and this is the ophthalmic nerve this is the maxillary nerve and here we can see this is the facial nerve so a branch of facial nerve known as greater petrosal nerve will bring the preganglionic secretomotor fibers and they will relay in this ganglion which is the pterygo palatine ganglion right which is hanging from the maxillary nerve the post ganglionic fibers will enter the maxillary nerve then its branch zygomatic nerve then zygomatico temporal nerve which will join the lacrimal nerve to provide the secretomotor fibers i hope this is clear now how they reach here the third branch of the ophthalmic nerve is the nasociliary nerve 
Now look at this word nasociliary. Naso, this means that this nerve will be running closer towards the nasal cavity. So nose is placed medial to the orbit. So this nerve will be running along the medial side. So here you can see this nerve. This is the nasociliary nerve. Now let us look at this again. The frontal nerve goes straight forward. Lacrimal is nerve is present along the lateral wall of the orbit and the nasociliary is present along the medial wall of the orbit. Nasociliary nerve will also pass through the superior orbital fissure but it will pass through its central part. In the central part of the superior orbital fissure we have a central tendinous ring of zin this which will provide origin to extraocular muscles. So it will pass through this tendinous ring of zin and here actually we are not able to see in next diagram I will show you that. Uh, here the nerve is covered by this levator palpebris superioris but you can still make out this nerve is going to go from lateral to medial side over this nerve that is the optic nerve. So it will cross the optic nerve from above by passing from lateral to medial side. And after that we can see here this run is uh, this nerve is going to run between two muscles. This is the superior oblique muscle of the eyeball and this is the medial rectus muscle of the eyeball. So it will uh, straight run between these two muscles and will give various branches. We'll just have a look at those branches. So here also we can see clearly now this is the nasociliary nerve and it is crossing. This is the optic nerve. So it is crossing the optic nerve from above from lateral to medial side. Let us look at the branches. What are the branches of this nerve? So it will give as I said it will be related to the ciliary ganglion. It will give communicating branches to the ciliary ganglion and from the ciliary ganglion then short ciliary nerves will arise which will supply the eyeball. Plus in addition to that it will also give some branches that is two to three long ciliary branches to the eyeball which can be seen here which are running along the medial side of the optic nerve. So first is communicating branch to ciliary ganglion. Next we have two to three long ciliary branches to the eyeball. Just remember the name ciliary words right. So you must know there will be some ciliary branches okay. And now let us see here because it is running here on the medial aspect the medial wall of the orbit there is a very thin bone there which bone is there medial wall is formed by the ethmoid bone right. So now you remember the ethmoid word. So here then we will have two branches one will be placed posteriorly so we call it posterior ethmoidal nerve right and another will be placed anteriorly so we call it anterior ethmoidal nerve. And after that, this will give another branch that is infratrochlear nerve. Infratrochlear nerve. This nerve is going to emerge on the face just below the trochlea for superior oblique muscle, right? Just next to the medial angle of the eye, right? So there we have the wall of the nose and the medial angle of the eye. So there it is going to emerge externally as intratrochlear nerve. In fact anterior ethmoidal nerve and the intratrochlear nerve they are its terminal branches. So it is easy to now remember the branches are first look at this word which is which word the ciliary word. So it will give communicating branches to the ciliary ganglion long ciliary branches to the eyeball and then we will have ethmoidal nerves right remember the ethmoid bone along the medial wall of the orbit posterior ethmoidal anterior ethmoidal and then finally we have the infratrochlear nerve. Now let us see what are the structures supplied by these nerves. So here uh, we can uh, I have already told you the ciliary nerves they are going to supply the eyeball right the, the cornea will be there then ciliary body will be there then iris would be there. So those eight structures will be supplied by the ciliary branches from the nasociliary nerve. Let us look at this posterior ethmoidal. Uh, branch here. So this is the posterior ethmoidal branch which we can see here and this is going to mainly supply the ethmoidal and the sphenoidal air sinus here. This is the sphenoidal air sinus and ethmoidal air sinuses will be there and some parts of the nasal cavity also. 
Next, we have the anterior ethmoidal nerve. Now, this anterior ethmoidal nerve, which can be seen here, right? So, this is the anterior ethmoidal nerve, right? This is going to divide into internal nasal branch and an external nasal branch. As the name suggests, the internal nasal branch is going to supply the nasal cavity. So, here actually we can see only its medial branch because this is the nasal septum here this internal branch will further subdivide into a lateral and medial branch. So, they will supply the nasal septum and the lateral wall of the nasal cavity. So, that is the internal nasal branch. The external nasal branch which we can see here is going to emerge on the face just below the lower border of the nasal bone. So, here also you can see this is the external nasal branch. So, this is external nasal, these are the internal nasal and here we have, this is the external nasal branch of anterior ethmoidal nerve which can be seen here and this is going to supply the skin of the lower part of the nose here, right? So, that is what can be seen here. Now, we are left with the infratrochlear nerve. So, infratrochlear nerve, we can see here, this is the infratrochlear nerve. As I said, it emerges on the face just below the trochlea for the superior oblique muscle here. And this is going to supply what? This is going to supply the lead eyelids, the medial part of the skin over the eyelids that will be supplied plus upper part of the skin over the upper part of the nose that will be supplied and it will also supply the lacrimal sac. So, this is the innervation by the ophthalmic nerve. Now, how do you remember what all structures? Remember, this is ophthalmic nerve. The three branches are frontal, lacrimal and the nasociliary. So, what all it is going to supply? Obviously, it is going to supply the structure within the orbit. What are those structure? Eyeball is there and lacrimal gland is there. So, they have to be supplied by the ophthalmic nerve. Now, what lies next or close to this? Now, close to this, if you see, on the medial side is the nasal cavity. So, it's uh, anterior ethmoidal and posterior ethmoidal branches. They are going to supply the nasal cavity also. Then, on the face, let us see what is present there. Above the orbit, what do we have? We have the uh, forehead and then we have the anterior part of the scalp. So, there we have supraorbital and supratrochlear. They will be supplying. Coming to the uh, nose, upper part of the nose, right? And the medial uh, part of the eyelids, the skin there, that will be supplied by infratrochlear branch and the skin over the lower part of the nose, that will be supplied by external nasal branch from which is from the anterior ethmoidal nerve. So, this is how you can remember the area of distribution of the ophthalmic division of trigeminal. So, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching and if you have not subscribed, please subscribe my channel so that I can put more such videos and if you want uh, the questions and answers in anatomy all types of that then visit the website that is anatomyqa.com. Thanks once again.